Hey, I've got a question for you. Do you believe that most people show up for work sincerely wanting to contribute their best to the team and the organization? Do you believe that to be true? Think about your current situation or places you've been in the past. Now, I might, you may disagree with me, but I actually believe that it's true. I believe most people really want to show up and contribute and do their best for the organization. I truly believe that. And I've been working with teams and leaders for a really long time. And I notice that things happen and, and people can kind of start contracting or withdrawing their energy from the team and the vision. Have you ever experienced that? And you might have a team where you feel like you've got 90% of people on in high gear and then you've got a couple people that just kind of drag you down. And what is that about? What is that about? Now, there's been a lot going on the last couple of years, of course, which changes the dynamics a little bit. But I think there's a variety of things that are going on here. Because, you know, you could have a great uh, vision and you could have a a said culture because I think sometimes we can state culture and it may not actually be the culture and have those things all lined up but we still get people kind of withdrawing and it's just like a leaky bucket you know that 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 energy that goes away from the rest of the team so what I'd like to share are five observances that I have that when people meet with resistance they tend to choose. And I'm going to just share what those different choices, how they impact the team and the people on the team. So here we go. So number one. Number one is that when, when we get resistance or conflict, which is what resistance is, we decide that we need to manage it. And as a little pet peeve of mine, I, um, the, the term conflict management um, just feels a little impersonal to me. <laughs> and it it seems like let's put this conflict in a box and manage it and get rid of it. And so if you are in a situation in which you've got a conflict and and your employer wants to box it up, you may not feel really um, acknowledged by that. And sometimes uh, corporate processes make those things kind of complicated and employees don't feel like anything is happening. And that's something that I've witnessed many, many times. But, but anyway, we may be trying to manage something that doesn't really quite ring true for people. So people, with, people start to withdraw. The second thing is inherently, there's a lot of people that, that avoid conflict. So when they meet up with resistance, they'll do anything to not have to deal with it. And there's a lot of ways people do that. They can hold it inside. They can be passive aggressive. Um, there's there's a lot of ways that shows up in organizations. And you know, I think in you know comedies tend to use conflict avoidance for humor. And so we have a lot of models in our comedies, both on TV and in movies, that think it's really funny when people don't deal with things directly. And so. Conflict avoidance is, is something that, again, people tend to withdraw if they've got some resistance somewhere and they don't know what to do with it. So the third thing is kind of the opposite of that, which is where you have someone, you have a, a system or you've got people that are highly confrontational. And they really get in there and they're very direct. And, and I'm, I'm all about being direct, but sometimes that can be a little overwhelming to people. So it's, it just depends on the personalities. You may have someone that's being really direct and it's really making other people kind of withdraw and, and feel bad about themselves. Uh, so then let's see, the fourth thing, the fourth thing is being oblivious. There can be a tendency for leaders and teams to be oblivious to conflict or resistance that's going on with their teams. And so I've met a number of leaders over the years that have said, oh, we don't have any conflict. <laughs> and I, I always smile inside when I hear people say that because the truth is conflict is where innovation happens. Conflict 
is where the juice happens. The deal is, is that conflict has got to be, um, it's got to be done well. It's got to be innovative rather than destructive. And that's, that's on another video that I'll mention in a minute. So the fifth thing is actually what I advocate, what I teach, and what I practice, which is to master conflict. And that's where you really understand the, what the dynamic is of conflict and how you do shift it or you shift it so that it's not destructive, so that it's innovative and productive and creative. And that's uh, the basis of my entire work of Spiral Impact. But a couple key things about that are that one, you have got to create some personal awareness. You know, I'm really thrilled to hear how emotional intelligence has become rather trendy in the, um, in the organizational development things because it's really important. I teach, I teach what I call centering, which incorporates emotional intelligence and mindfulness. But it's each person on that team, and especially the leadership, creating a, a really strong sense of self so that you can be in your strength and, and own your own true power and be balanced and focused. Those are such key things, particularly with all we've got going on in the world today. So we thought, well, I'm not gonna go through it. You know what's going on. We've got, we've got ideological differences. We've got supply chain issues. We've got, um, we've got inclusion and equity and diversity programs that while they're good can create a lot of resistance as well. So those are all things happening. So okay, so to master conflict, one is to create that personal, personal presence and personal awareness that you have. And the other, the other thing, and while it's not as simplistic as I'm saying, but you also need to cultivate a curiosity, a curiosity both you and your team of exploring other viewpoints where you may not agree but to have a sincere curiosity for inclusion in with all of your team members. Because if someone's feeling excluded, then they, um, they, they tend to withdraw. So those are my five things. And I said, I've got a, another video where I talk about what is conflict. And you might enjoy watching it if you haven't seen me before, or even if you have seen me before. Oh, and by the way, I am Karen Valencic. I'm the founder of Spiral Impact. Thanks for taking the time. I'd love your comments and your questions. Bye-bye.